Call to order the Kern Council of Government's Transportation Planning Policy Committee of Thursday, March 16th. And we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. God indivisible with liberty and justice for all roll call please thank you mr chairman um ayon it's it's ayon ayon present i i did it wrong it's like i own you yeah you own me okay well, i can remember not that. not you but uh yeah i can remember that i figure i wake up the the crowd <laughs> David Couch. Here. Ryan Dermody. Present. Kyle Blades. Present. And yes, that Kyle was posted as a meeting place. Uh, John Crump. Here. Malcolm Warney. Present. Orshel Cryer. Here. Michael Navarro. Here. Jim Crichton. Here. Cindy Parra. I'm here. Kathy Proud is absent. Gilberto Reyna. I'm here. Zach Scribner. Here. Bob Smith. I'm here. Phil Smith. Here. Juan Murillo. Here. And Veronica Vasquez. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Are there any public comments? Yes, we have one. Yes, sir. Is this on? Okay, very good. Uh, many of you guys know me. I'm Jay Schlosser. I'm the development director and city engineer for the city of Tatchby. I've been the city engineer, gosh, it's going to be 20 years next year. Uh, so I've been driving 58 and doing Caltrans and doing federal projects for the city of Tatchby for a long, long time. And it was probably not appropriate for me to be at the last meeting, but Aaron mentioned that you guys were going to be, that the, that the chairwoman of the CTC was going to be present. And so I thought I would just come. Uh, I, as the CTC chair, I'm sorry, the TTAC chair, uh, not the CTC chair, <laughs> TTAC chair, um, I represent in a lot of ways all of you all's technical folks who execute your projects. Um, and so I just wanted to add to the conversation briefly and say um, to you all, uh, I'll leave the truck climbing lanes on 58 alone. I think everyone knows uh, where Tatchby stands on that. But to speak to the environmental issue that was briefly discussed, um, I, I can reflect respectfully, that universally the technical folks that you guys employ to do this work are frustrated with how hard it is to get environmental work done. And it often af negatively affects our ability to deliver projects. Uh, and it doesn't seem to be getting more streamlined, uh, even though the environmental world here in California is really settled in. The law is settled. Everybody knows what needs to be done and how to do it. Um, and so usually that streamlines process instead of extending process. But we have found in, as the years have gone by, and I've done this for 20 years, that it's only gotten more challenging to get projects, even simple projects, across the finish line. So let me maybe speak as the TTAC chair to you guys in that regard and to our guest from the CTC that this is an area where we would really like to see our legislative folks and the folks at Caltrans hear us say that this is a challenging issue that we need to find some solutions for. So that's my comment, and uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate it. 
Any other public comments? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ollie Danner. I'm with Project Clean Air. Uh, thanks for allowing me to speak today. Um, I wanted to thank Kern Cog for uh, sponsoring an event we had February 23rd. Uh, it was the first in the, in the nation zero emission convoy in, in Kern County. We had quite a bit uh, attendance from some of the members here and, and uh, other dignitaries and mayors from, and you'll see some of these in the video. I have a short video to show you. We just received a video this morning, so it's pretty exciting. Uh, we can show what Bakersfield is doing in, in the transition to clean uh, transportation in the medium and heavy duty yes, truck sector. So uh, Becky, if you wouldn't okay. mind, please um, uh, playing the video. Yes. Sure, no problem. I think you have to hit the little uh, play button on the bottom. One over. Right there. There you go. And is there sound? That that's fine. You'll be able to see the video on YouTube, so just enjoy for the, for the moment. <laughs> so, that's okay. I, I'll commentate a little bit as we play here. We had about uh, 12 zero emission uh, electric and hydrogen trucks participate as well as natural gas. Um, we had about 175 attendees, and we have speakers from CARB uh, and uh, California. Um, to be San Joaquin Air Pollution I'm District, with, uh, uh, as well as CalStart, to talk and, uh, about the, the emissions awesome. uh, really, and programs. Really cool really we had uh, a VIP bus with dignitaries uh, participate in the convoy, which went from Bakersfield to Merced Avenue to Flying J back to Bakersfield. And we hired a, a film crew to take pictures and do drones. The drone footage will be coming up here in a second. So it was held at the Westchester on FN 28th. Is the way to go. We had a lot of support from the Downtown Business that. Association. And the greatest thing about this it was kind of a trick to get all the trucks to Except stay together, actually. Me. It's like a convoy, it was our first convoy. You can actually hear and there we are, illegally shooting over the freeway. <laughs> so, we have evidence of the crime. And there's our Linda Yorada. And so we stopped at Flying J, got out, and took some pictures. And, got, and let some of the other truckers get to see some of the Class A trucks that are available. That gentleman was from uh, he, with Travel America, which was just purchased by British Petroleum. And this is pretty neat, going through the almond orchards in bloom. And that's a hydrogen bus, by the way. And uh, there was a conference which lit, went from 10 to 2. We had about six speakers. This gentleman was from Watt EV. And there was quite a bit of engagement. The gentleman from uh, Motive, they make uh, class three to six shut, uh, box trucks. And that's the final shot right there, leading in charge. That's a Peterbilt box truck. So thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other public comments? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tony Renteria. I'm the Education Outreach Coordinator uh, at Bike Bakersfield. Um, so in your guys' packet we gave you, uh, we created a program called the Current Active Transportation Alliance, um, where we go to 13 um, of, your, of the areas and um, host bike events and whatnot, bike safety events. Um, <clears throat> I'm here to talk to you a little bit about bike month. Obviously, that's a couple months away, um, but I would um, love for you uh, all to stop by. Um, we're going to have a, we're gonna host a bike month and we encourage everybody to, we're gonna create a date and encourage everybody to stop by. We're gonna have a, a, a route planned and um, really just encourage all you all to get out in the community and ride with us. Um, second, um, we're gonna be hosting a uh, competition. It's a, a uh, bike, uh, excuse me, a bike to, what was that? 
a, uh, a bike competition where each, each community um, rides maybe to and from work. I mean, everybody in the community, we're going to gather all that information and whoever has the most mileage, we're gonna create some kind of prize and whatnot. So again, really, um, I would love for all you all to uh, engage in this uh, program. Uh, again, in your packet, you have all the information to contact me and whatnot. Um, yeah, and I appreciate your time. Thank you, Tony. I'll, I'll ride my bike that month. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Any other public comments? One more. Absolutely. Good evening. I'm Leanne Eager. I'm president and st oh, no, I'm not president. That's my other job. Uh -huh. um, I'm chair of the California Transportation Commission, and I was honored uh, to come tonight uh, to your meeting to, to meet all of uh, the representatives here from um, the folks in Kern County. Um, I have to say I, I um, learned a lot tonight. Um, thank you all so much for being honest and open about uh, what your needs are and what the state can do. And I know this is like, you know, what can the governor do for you, right? What can the government do for you? Um, but really, I want you to know that uh, the California Transportation Commission um, is working closely with Caltrans, working closely with CalSTA and our other partners um, to do things right, to do things together, to really listen to the folks in the communities to say, here's what we need in our communities, how can you make that happen? And so um, I was uh, pleased to come here, thank you Aaron for inviting me, um, so that I know exactly what it is that, that you all need. What are your priorities so that we can find the, the way to yes? I think uh, for so many years, uh, I kept hearing from people saying, oh man, I wanna get this done, I, we just can't get it, we keep getting no. We don't wanna hear no anymore. We all wanna hear yes. So I will guarantee to all of you um, that I will continue to listen, that I will continue to hear you and continue to fight for what is right in our communities so that we can all get to yes and get it done and get it done in our lifetime. So I know there were some of us saying, you know, we wanna make sure that we're still walking when we can go cut that ribbon, right? I'll be right there with you. So thank you all so much. And I know you all are doing wonderful work. And I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart um, because I know you're all volunteers that you come here and do this. So thank you for all of your hard work and we'll do this together. Thank you, Leanne. We do appreciate you coming down and appreciate your time and listening. And I agree, no is not the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> Any other public comments? Hearing none, uh, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Opportunity for public comment. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by KernCog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. Any council member wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? Any public wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? And I have a motion. Second. Second. Roll call vote, please. Aye. Aye. Yes. Germany. Yes. Blaze. Aye. Crump. Yes. Warney. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Para. Yes. Raina. Yes. Scribner. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. Morillo. Yes. And Vasquez. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Item 5, 2023. Federal Transportation Improvement Program, Draft Amendment Number 4, Ms. Pacheco. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Amendment Number 4 includes revisions to the State Highway Regional Choice Program, Congestion Mitigation Air Quality Program, Transit Program, and Non-Motorized Program. The public period begins uh, ends March 17th. 
The Kern Cog Executive Director will consider approval of the amendment on March 20th. State and federal approval is required. At this time, I ask the chair to please open the public hearing, allow for public comment, and then close the public hearing. Thank you. This will open the public hearing. Does the public have any comments? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Caltrans Report, District 6, Mr. Navarro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, members of the committee. Um, I'm outranked by Director Dermot. Should I defer to you to make a special appearance? Okay, just making sure. All right, thank you. Um, just want a quick plug for Clean California. As I've mentioned the last couple of months, the Clean California Local Grants Program call for projects went out uh, last February on Valentine's Day. The applications are due April 28th, and there's $100 million available. Really encourage your local communities because we've done some great projects with this Clean California coming through with road diet projects and beautification projects. And District 6, we received, I think, 15 of the 34 applications were successful. So really encourage you to participate. Also want to give a plug for Clean California Day of Action on March 25th, as well as week-long Clean California events kicking off tomorrow, March 17th. I know we're doing some tree plantings in Fresno. There's about eight community events that will be going on throughout Kern County. I think four or five coming up this weekend on the 18th, and then another four uh, being sponsored by Keep Baker Feel Beautiful. There's some tire amnesty days as well occurring, so encourage the participation. Um, we're talking about safety improvements, and they had the, the announcement for Cycle 11 for the Highway Safety Improvement Program. And um, Council Member Randy, you brought up Wasco. Wasco did receive two locations that we've talked about over the last couple of years, uh, one being at State Route 43 and A Street for the Flashing Beacon and then a hawk at State Route 46 in Poplar. And I know we've had numerous conversations with your staff, so um, congratulations on those two projects being selected. Um, also during our, our, our conversation with Chair Eager, we brought, she asked a question about truck-only lanes and just wanted to share that um, an advertisement for uh, a multi-district State Route 99 uh, comprehensive corridor, multimodal corridor plan study went out for a call for a consultant for RFP um, just yesterday. It's gonna be a multi-district study. It's gonna go all the way from the grapevine up to US 50 in Sacramento. So really excited about this study, getting a consultant on board, and we'll be looking at things like managed lanes, truck only lanes along the 99 corridor, looking where it's feasible, um, opportunities for clean fueling for trucks. will be a lot of the focus on that. So excited to get a consultant on board and get that activity started. Also, I'm sure you're aware there's been a lot of storm work and road closures ongoing. So currently there's five locations in Kern County, um, a couple along State Route 43, uh, Kern 58, Kern 155 and then Kern 178 around Kern Canyon uh, still have closures ongoing. Uh, doing our best to get those cleaned up and get those opened. On to project updates, um, I'll say Chair Smith, your project, Union Avenue, <laughs> the Hawk. Um, as you know, that project is done, but we've been having some issues with electrical sensors, so the contractor is working on that, so that's the reason why that isn't fully activated, but we're working with the contractor to get that done here soon. Stay Route 46, the uh, Segment 4B, no major changes in construction due to the weather. That project is scheduled for completion December of, of this year. Segment 4C, that project advertised on March 6th, and bids will be open on April 19th, and we're hoping for a summer-fall construction start on that. A uh, new project to update on, California Aqueduct, State Route 166. This is a bridge rehab project, and just giving an early heads up on this one because it will require a full shutdown of the bridge for 30 to 40 days. Uh, so I know our project manager is starting to reach out. They've reached out to Taft to Maricopa um, to start that coordination and conversation about what that closure will look like. Uh, the Maricopa Highway Cap M discussed that project in the past. We anticipate our environmental documents circulating soon and hoping to advertise that project this summer. That will include some of the pedestrian facilities we've talked about before with the enhanced crosswalk at State Route 33 and Kern Street. Uh, currently, that project is in design phase. Uh, left town, left. Taft left turn channelization project on State Route 119 at Kern Street Airport Road. Uh, construction expected to start on March 20th, barring any weather delays. That just seems eminent these days, I guess. Um, two roundabout projects on State Route 184, one at 223, and um, one at Sunset. Expected completion date for those two projects is June of this year. And uh, Morning Drive rehab project on State Route 144. Project's currently in design right away phase. Um, we actually just got permission to Ray to list that project yesterday, and we plan to submit that project to CTC for allocation at the May meeting. With that, that completes my report. Be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Michael. I just I remember asking you about the uh, 
eastbound Rosedale Highway slash 24th Street under 99. We'd, we'd got the good bike lanes and the green paint going mm -hmm. westbound. And is there any progress on designing something eastbound through there for bicycles? Nothing's been initiated yet other than just conversations. I mentioned we do have that on our, on our priority list and working with our, our maintenance traffic op folks and looking where we could put some minor money potentially on a future project, but nothing's been initiated to be okay, honest well, with you. I'll just keep reminding Please you. Please do. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Any other comments for Mr. Navarro? Yes. I have one real quick. What, what section is 4C on 46? I'm sorry? What section is 4C on 46? Where, where 4C is that? on 46 is uh, the one directly, so it's basically... It's I can help you, lost Michael. Lost. Okay. It's, f it's from just west of the California aqueduct through the oil fields connect and it will connect up to the existing four lane uh, Michael um, question this are great news okay thank you um, you said 43 and 8 right 8th, 8th Street 43 and 8th Street was for the rectum rectangular rapid right. flashing beacon was the application and then a hawk was for four for uh, 46 and pop so this our application no funding has been uh, approved already it was it was announced this past week the funding has been approved Yes, Cycle 11 awarded projects was announced. Okay, correct. and uh, any prospective dates for completion? I don't, because that was actually awarded to Wasco, so we'll, we'll, we'll reach out to your team and start coordinating. Okay, I'll reach out to them as well. Thank you. The, uh, the list of all the awarded projects for HSIP are, are in your packet. Any other questions for District 6? Thank you, District Director of Nine, for coming to see us. <laughs> well, Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Ryan Dermody, Caltrans District Nine Director. For those that don't know, District Nine picks up Kern County from basically the Caliente cut, uh, turnoff on State Route 58, um, heading east. So we have most of the the mountains and the desert portions of of Kern County. Most, not all. You got some still. But uh, I do want to touch on storm updates that, that Michael talked about. Um, Kern County, Inyo County, and Mono County in our district has all been touched by the storms. They were part of the governor's declaration of emergency. Um, Kern County, f for, for our portion, fared okay. We had some, some uh, washouts in, in certain locations. Nothing major, though. We were able to clean it up pretty quickly. Unfortunately, uh, your neighbors to the north in Mono County <coughs> had some communities that were isolated and had to have helicopter supplies flown in, which was uh, c keeping us very busy at our emergency operations center over the last few weeks. So keep them in your thoughts as, as we go forward. Um, touching on some of those storm updates, though, I, I do know that our local assistance team, which works closely with, with Kern County and the cities in our area, has been talking to your, your, your staff members and, and working on, you know, fixes and things that need to happen as a result of the storms. So... I want, want to pass that along as well. Uh, Council Member Smith, you mentioned earlier about equipment and 58, and those storms did affect 58, and I believe 58 was closed probably more times this year than it has in a lot of years. Um, but the precipitation has been off the charts. But I do have some good news. Uh, we did award the Tehachapi Maintenance Station um, project, so the new maintenance station is going to be under construction soon. And so that's great because that will greatly expand the facility into Hatchby and it'll help us to be able to cover Stay Route 58 much better with uh, more equipment, more room, and things to work on. So, yeah, I wanted to let you know that. Uh, we did talk a lot about the State Route 58 truck climbing lane earlier tonight. Um, as I mentioned, the draft environmental document uh, is likely to be signed next week. That's the target, and I believe it will be. And then there'll be a 30-day public review. And then we get comments, we respond to comments, and then we finalize that document. Once that's completed, we can roll right into starting on design. So we are, gonna, we are planning to do design work as much as possible. Uh, your executive director and I have talked about that, and that there may be some funds left over, which I think there are, to be able to, to work on design. And then we also do have some right-of-way acquisitions that will be required going forward. So just want to let everybody know that. Um, our hope is to tie that truck climbing lane project with the Keen Rehab project to do it all at once, as was discussed earlier. That would be the greatest benefit. But again, we are looking for funding for the construction and right-of-way portions of that project. Um, Cummings Valley Road intersection. Uh, we've been talking about that project for a very long time at State Route 202 in Cummings Valley Road near Tehachapi. 
Um, I apologize. It's been a rough winter. I was hoping that project would get done, but with all the weather we've had and some utility delays, it's just it's been a long, a long go on that project. Um, for those of you that travel on State Route 14, on the very southern part of the two-lane section, we do have an overlay project coming. It should start any day now. Um, I, I drove that today, and it's getting pretty rough, but I'm excited to say we will have a, an overlay on that soon, so that'll make it much smoother for those that use that facility. Uh, Clean California projects, uh, the Rosamond Interchange on State Route 14 at Rosamond. We do have a zero-scape beautification project that has been awarded and should go to construction very soon. Um, for those of you that travel through Kramer Junction or 58 and 395, uh, connect it's basically that same kind of theme it'll be rocks and kind of just a zero scape nice clean up that intersection to make it look nicer um, and then we do have a project way out on the horizon just a, a heads up and i'm sure kirsten helton who's been here has talked a lot about this but ridgecrest annual kern pavement uh, the city of ridgecrest is going to undergo a, a major rehab of their their state highway and annual kern as well so there'll be sidewalk rehabilitation pavement rehabilitation all kinds of stuff happening we, st we expect to start that in 2028. I know it's a long ways off, but I just want to start getting it on people's radar because that will be a, a very large project for that area. Uh, we have several Clean California Day of Actions coming up, and uh, I won't list them all, but there's a lot in Cal City, Tehachapi, Ridgecrest, and we'll get them in the notes so that everybody's aware of, of what's happening. And that concludes my report. If uh, anybody has any questions, happy to answer. Thank you so much, and again, thank you for coming. Any questions for District 9? Mr. Chairman, I, I have Ryan, can you share with me the specific details, not now, but by email would be best, on the Keene Rehab, the EA, the complete schedule, and I will get that to Leanne. Absolutely. Councilmember Smith. And in that note, you were going to get that uh, flyover from the drone to Aaron and me and to Leanne. It's a drone footage of the truck climbing lanes. I think it was on from down on General Beale Road or somewhere in that area, wasn't it? Good video. Thank you. Any other comments for District 9? Hearing none, Executive Director's Report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Board Members. I have uh, about five items on this agenda. Uh, on March 8th, in this very mo room, we had a Regional High Speed Rail Subcommittee meeting. That's a subcommittee of, of your uh, technical advisory com committee. Uh, meeting was attended by members of Wasco, Shafter, Bakersfield, Tatchby, Kern County, Caltrans District 6, and Kern Cog. I was there myself uh, uh, with staff members also. High Speed Rail re was represented by their chairman of their board, their CEO, CO COO and uh, several of their um, management level employees. We had a, about a two hour discussion and we will continue to uh, have discussions with High Speed Rail. The next CTC meeting uh, that was mentioned earlier today is March 22nd and 23rd, which is next week in Los Angeles. April 12th to 14th, I mentioned this last month, is Kern Cog's federal certification site visit. Some of you have already been uh, contacted, and if you haven't been, only a handful of you w are likely to be interviewed by Federal Highway Administration and Federal Transit Administration, and members of your cities um, will also be in interviewed, specifically Delano, Golden Empire Transit, and also Taft. RSTP and CMAC timelines representing approximately $50 million in funding available to our uh, region were on the consent agenda. Thank you for approving that. The call for <coughs> projects will be posted on the Kern Cog website by next week. Applications are due July 17th, 2023. And there's money for, for everyone there. Please, if, uh, please let your staff know and, and urge them to not only apply, but to de deliver the projects that we have scheduled for this fiscal year. And I'll talk a little bit more about that um, when I go over what's in your folders. During the uh, past month, to continue to have meetings about 
State Route 99 and State Route 58 missing connector, specifically the eighth and final movement, 204 and Union Avenue, 7th Standard and 43 uh, proposed roundabout, safety improvements on State Route 33. Uh, just today we had a meeting on updating the status of State Route 46, 4B and 4C, and uh, also truck climbing lanes on State Route 58. That concludes my report on this agenda, Mr. Chairman, subject to any of your questions. Thank you, Director. Any comments for Mr. Hakimi? You mentioned 46, and I would just like to bring up to our guest where 46 ends at Kern County line, there's a gap of uh, where it's one lane for a couple thousand feet or something like that. And fairly small project that would mean a lot to everybody from Fresno and Bakersfield that travels to the coast. So uh, if you can put that on your radar, so I think it would be good. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, can I share with you a recent update on that? Sure. So, so as you probably know, but not everybody in the room knows, the project is about 2,500 feet long with less than 1,000 feet in Kern County and the balance in San Luis Obispo County. Up to about a week ago, San Luis Obispo uh, District of Caltrans, which is District 5, was the lead, um, and they were unlikely to... Um, be able to meet the deadline of June of 2024 for the money that we contributed to that project. Uh, district 6, uh, specifically the District 6 director, Diana Gomez, has ag agreed to take on a much larger role, even though the Kern County portion is only um, under 1,000 feet. And she assures me that her and her staff uh, will deliver the project on time. And it the, the project, as many of you know, who drive through there, was was an oversight. It, it should have connect the work in Kern County should have connected to the um, truck climbing lanes that are only 2,000 feet away. Great, thanks for the update. So we will adjourn that meeting and open the Kern Council of Governments meeting. Roll call is the same. Any public comments? Seeing none, consent agenda. Anybody wish to pull anything off the consent agenda? Any public wish to pull anything off consent agenda? A motion on consent. Second. Roll call vote, please. Thank you. Uh, Vasquez. Aye. Mur Murillo. Phil Smith. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Zach Scribner. Yes. Raina. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Crump. Yes. Blades. Aye. Couch. Yes. And Ion. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I you. Not forget that. <laughs> Very good. Election of officers. Each year, the Kern Council of Governments Board of Directors selects a chairman and a vice chairman from the current, for the Kern Cog Board. I'll Sorry. make a motion that we keep the same slate. Uh, uh, Council Member Smith as chair and Zach Scribner as vice chair. A second. Any other nominations? <laughs> Roll call vote, please. I own. Aye. Couch. Yes. Blades. Aye. Crump. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Raina. <coughs> yes. Scrivener. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Bill Smith. Yes. Morillo. Yes. And Vasquez. Yes. Thank you. Executive Director's Report. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman and board members. Just a reminder, March 28th 
is our Valley Voice meeting in Sacramento. Ms. Napier will be attending for Kern Cog. San Joaquin Valley Policy Conference, annual policy conference, is April 24th to 26th at the Great Wolf Lodge in Manteca. Please let me know if any of you would like to attend. Kern Cog will have a staff member there. I will be there specifically. Your uh, FPPC Form 700s are due April 1st. On March 10th, Supervisor Couch, Chairman Smith, Mayor Pro Tem Cryer, and I met with Assemblywoman Dr. Jasmine Baines and one of our staff, along with Caltrans District 6 Director here in our office, um, to give her an update on transportation in Kern County. Um, she was originally scheduled to only spend about 20 minutes with us, but we ended up spending about an hour and a half with her and shared our priorities and uh, tried to educate her and bring her up to speed on transportation as m much as we could. In your folders, uh, thank you f for the board members that attended that meeting. It was very helpful to have you there too. In your folders this evening, there's a timeline covering March through July, schedule of cash disbursements, and the next item is something I'd like to discuss for just a moment. I periodically share with you our, our delivery percentages, and we are looking really good, but there's a catch to it. Uh, we're, the reason why our delivery is so high is, is specifically because of a project on Route 46 that we're um, de uh, delivered with um, earmark, old earmark mark funds. So the numbers look artificially high. Please, please uh, lean on your staffs to deliver. L literally only a handful of projects uh, that are funded in this fiscal year um, have, have been delivered. And in about two weeks, we'll be six months through the, f the federal fiscal year. So in the next two to three months, if, if your cities and county staff don't deliver, that money could be taken away by other cities. That's something that we try to do often, but we are way behind on delivery this year. That's the uh, blue and yellow uh, flyer. And, and again, don't, the numbers are artificially high for Kern County. Uh, er, earlier we touched on the H, HSIP Cycle 11, which was announced a few days ago. I want to congratulate Bakersfield has four project awarded, and these are projects that um, the federal government through Caltrans awards directly to your agencies, and your agencies deliver those projects on, on the, your own. Bakersfield, Delano, Kern County, and Wasco received two projects that were me mentioned earlier. The biking and walking community safety meeting flyer that was mentioned during uh, public comments and an invitation to attend the 2023 Transit Symposium. With that, that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman, subject to any of your questions. Any questions for the director? Oh, one more thing. I, I want to personally thank uh, the chairman of the CTC, Leanne, for coming. Uh, really appreciate you making the trip down here. Member statements, questions? I will also thank Leanne for coming. And we are adjourned.